that tonight we have uh, our good friend Tom. Uh, Tom is a managing director at Sunrock Media and Marketing, uh, and it, we'll kick it off to him uh, momentarily. But did want to um, make a few announcements really quickly. So this. This presentation should run roughly about 30 or so minutes. We'll leave about 15 minutes or so with Q&A. Um, we may go over. If you have some additional questions, we'll be sure to try to address as many as possible. Uh, these are some of our past events that we've held this year. Uh, as you can see uh, down at the bottom, uh, next month, either on June 8th or 15th, we will be having another alum, uh, Jonathan Gruber, discuss careers in sales and finance. finance. So if you have any interest in that field, um, definitely uh, please register. Uh, if you have any, as you notice, we do have two dates set here. So we're uh, in the works of planning which date would best be suited for students to attend, especially as we approach finals and, and graduation. So if you have any insight or input or, or recommendations on what you think would be most appropriate, um, please feel free to enter in the chat. Um, we welcome all uh, advice and, and we'll We'll take that into account. Uh, as you'll note the, uh, as well, uh, this session is being recorded. Um, so you will be able to visit uh, the comm department website and view the recording. We'll also provide a copy of the slide deck, which, Ron, uh, which Tom will be using um, for his presentation. So if you are attending for a course and need to um, reference it for, for an assignment uh, or just simply in interested and curious, um, you'll have access to both. Before we begin, I do want to also call out that we are up on social media, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, definitely feel free to join us. These are um, avenues for you to be uh, updated on what's occurring with the Comm Council, uh, upcoming events such as the Virtual Career Series or Career Day, and really just stay, uh, stay in touch and learn more. And um, uh, educate yourselves on potentially wanting to become part of this council down the road uh, once you do enter the uh, adult world. So uh, without further ado, I will pass this over to Tom. And Tom, thank you for joining us. And let me go ahead and start sharing your slide deck. So we can have that. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. So, hey, Matt, thank you. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you uh, for joining us. And you know, it's really a pleasure to be able to share my career journey um, and share some ideas and thoughts on how a communications degree really can allow you to pivot throughout your career. And obviously, it's what I did. So I'll share my experiences and get some thoughts and Certainly open any questions you may have, certainly during the presentation, if you just send a chat question through or we'll have Q&A at the end. And this presentation is about 25 minutes or so. So uh, with that, we'll get started and talk about you know, my career journey. So quick summary to start. So <clears throat> I completed my BA in Comm Studies in 1977. Um, focused a lot on mass communications and was interested in television production. So accepted a, I accepted a TV production summer internship at the NBC station in Los Angeles. And after a three month summer internship, uh, was hired onto the show. So that gave me an opportunity to not only first get to understand what TV production is all about, but then because I was, you know, in the industry, I was hired onto the show and, started my career and I did that for about a year and realized it really wasn't for me. So I returned to UCSB to get my master's degree in 78 and earning the master's degree in 1980. And my thesis was on the effectiveness of video within a corporate setting. So obviously that's a little bit of a pivot from my uh, TV production, but it uh, allowed me to get into something new and, and very unique. So next point. So then I obviously launched my career beginning in corporate video and then continued to evolve throughout my career. And just here's some of the titles. You can go to the next slide, next point. <clears throat> there we go. So then I pivoted throughout my career in the following roles. So. Started as a corporate video manager, and I'll talk a little bit about that and how that started. Uh, titles I held moving on was a marketing proposal manager, 
uh, moved into PR, uh, then from PR added, uh, it's called Senior Manager of Communications because I added advertising responsibility. Then uh, continued to grow in uh, marketing and communications and had the titles of both director and VP of marketing, communications and advertising. Went on to be VP of marketing and then expanded further and took on a global role with an international company and had worldwide responsibility for marketing and communications. Um, that company had facilities around the world from you know, France and London and Spain and Italy and Germany and uh, really gave me some really interesting, unique global experience. And then uh, most recently, managing director, that's when after many years in the corporate world, decided to start my own marketing and communications consulting firm and held the title of managing director. So importantly, I wanted to make the point of there's great you know, opportunity with your communications degree, uh, with diversity of, you know, virtually there's need for communications in every industry. Some of the industries I've worked in include the following. Started out in aerospace and defense. I've worked in this commercial satellite communications business. That's a, a business where company owns satellites and they sell and lease uh, time to everybody from television providers to news organizations to uh, businesses that transmit data by satellite. I've worked for a utility company in the green energy business. Um, transition into cable TV. I've worked in entertainment services, which is essentially post-production and visual effects. This is with Technicolor, where um, virtually everything you need to do to finish a, a motion picture was done as an out, uh, outsourced service by Technicolor. I've been in entertainment distribution with Fathom Events and Comcast and also in broadband services. So it's important to note that uh, there's just a wide variety. I mean, as you saw in some of the earlier virtual career series, the different industries people have been in. And then moving into consulting, if we go to the next point, uh, provided consulting services in these industries from broadband, to selling high-speed internet, to advertising technology companies. This was a company that was developing a a new particular kind of ad unit for online mark, ad line, online advertising <clears throat> and help them with product development and positioning, work with gaming companies, uh, with digital equipment hardware companies, worked in the real estate industry, even though I don't have a real estate license, they still had interesting marketing challenges. And I've worked with online TV distribution startups. So the great thing about a communications degree is you can apply it in virtually any industry you want. One of the issues that, um, you know, I faced early on when I was in Santa Barbara was, you know, how do I get some practical experience when I'm in a theoretical education? So in my senior year, I started to think about what I would do next and how could I get some real world practical experience or exposure to a field of interest. So as I said, I had interest in mass communication and media. <clears throat> You know, I didn't have any practical experience, but I needed additional units to graduate. So I worked with a professor and created an independent study class. It was just me and the professor. And uh, the way I designed it, it would require connecting with TV producers and industry personnel. Now, uh, if you know anything about TV production, it's very nepotistic. I did not have any industry connections. So um, I use this project as a way to connect with people in the industry, but it required letter writing, cold calling, get interviews for the project. And then fortunately, following one interview, an executive producer offered me the summer internship that I'd mentioned earlier. So again, it was a way for me to balance the theoretical education by you know, actually getting into an industry I thought I wanted to work in. Um, for my master's thesis, kind of the same thing. I started off wanting to do a theoretical piece on children's television and the effectiveness of children's television, tying together, you know, the production experience with, you know, something that I was passionate about. But after I began uh, doing the research survey of all the work that had been done in that field, I really discovered it was a saturated field 
and really wouldn't help me land a job. Um, so, you know, I stepped back and I pivoted again and uh, discovered a new area, which was corporate video. And at the time, this was fairly new that big corporations were starting to spend a lot of money and putting television production facilities and teams within their corporation to create all the things they need for corporate communication. So again, I didn't wanna do something just purely theoretical. So I conducted a corporate video effectiveness study with a major international airline. So this allowed me to get out into the business world, uh, convince this airline that they could benefit from this specific research that I'd be doing and I would share with them and do a, a special summary that would help them continue to justify what they were doing in the world of video and gave me really uh, unique experience and exposure to the business world. And then when I completed the thesis, I really had something unique and demonstrable when seeking my first job out of grad school. You know, when they're looking at candidates and you know, I said, okay, you've got this guy with a master's degree, but he's got research on the effectiveness of corporate video. It really gave me a leg up and an opportunity to launch my career in corporate video. So um, began uh, locally in Santa Barbara, the company called Santa Barbara Research Center. There was a, a subsidiary of Hughes Aircraft Company and they were launching a video, corporate video department and they brought me in to take the lead and launch that. So think about what I was doing. I was uh, creating video marketing and communications program for selling, informing, educating, and promoting with PR. The audiences were customers, employees, general public, shareholders. And then to think about pivoting, I you know, really you know, broke down, okay, what did this role involve? So it involved many basic communication skills, identifying and understanding the target audience, writing scripts, creating visuals and video storylines to deliver impact, is managing budgets, managing people, schedules, deadlines, and also creating support materials, brochures, proposals, et cetera. So after a couple of years, I started thinking about, well, do I wanna do this forever or what else could I be doing? So if you go to the next point, you know, I thought, well, look, if I can write a script, I can write a press release or I can develop and manage an ad campaign. Um, and, you know, just by breaking down the basics of what that job was, allowed me to think about, okay, how can I pivot? How can I take these experiences and shift to a new role? So we'll go to the next slide. So that first pivot was into public relations. Now, importantly, um, this opportunity came through networking and establishing good relationships. I had a, a client that I worked with in corporate video. She wor uh, worked for a subsidiary and I did a big program for her. It was successful, she was very happy with it. We stayed in touch over the years. And so she then when had an opportunity, if you go to the next bullet point, um, you know, she needed a PR manager and because number one, I had the relationship. Number two, I had a successful project with her. And then I was able to break down all the things I had done in corporate video and apply them to her needs in public relations. So a couple of things to remember when you think about pivoting, think about what you do in your current job and how those skills might apply to your next job. And importantly, remember <clears throat> when you get into your job, first job, <clears throat> every client is a potential employer. Every person you interact with in that company or outside the company, could be a potential future employer. So uh, if you have success and you build relationships, you'll wanna maintain those relationships. So my evolution continued uh, building and expanding my role. You know, I continued using the same evaluation and expansion process, particularly you know, as I you know, convinced people I could take on additional responsibilities. I was very fortunate to be part of the startup team at DirecTV. I think I was employee number 20. Um, I started as the senior manager of communications and chief spokesperson. And at that time when we launched, it was mainly PR because we were actually in a pre-launch period, like two years before we launched. 
but I quickly advanced in that company to VP of advertising and marketing communications. And the things that you know were added on, and keep in mind, this was a startup, so they had limited needs at the beginning. And then as the company grew and we started to get closer to launch, there were new uh, needs and requirements. And I was able to adapt and take these additional areas on. One was obviously advertising and branding. This involved things like managing agencies, defining our corporate goals, helping the agency understand what we're trying to achieve, uh, developing the brand, not only the logo, but what does the brand stand for, um, helping define audiences and managing budgets. Budgets. You know, again, as I, you mentioned, as I mentioned previously, you know, one of the tasks in corporate video is managing budgets. So they were small potatoes to what we were doing at DirecTV. So, you know, I went from managing a million dollar budget to quickly, it was a hundred million dollars in advertising. Uh, the next responsibility, you know, expanded into was taking over strategic PR. Um, before we could launch, we needed to get legislation passed in Washington. So that involved lobbying congressmen and having a presence in Washington, D.C. So I was responsible for uh, hiring a lobbyist, managing the messaging, writing executive speeches for testimony to Congress. Um, that's what we call strategic PR. And then when we finally launched and had 3,000 retailers around the country selling direct TV on our behalf, we needed sales materials for national retailers like Best Buy, Walmart, Costco. Um, so we created that department under my wing of, of advertising and marketing communications. And this allowed us to maintain consistency and messaging and branding and, you know, but, you know, very quickly within a period of, I think it was from 92 to, to 99, seven years, I went from being a, you know, sole sole person in the department to having 100 people reporting to me. But again, it was being willing to see the skills I had, uh, apply them in different areas and adapt them and bring them all together and convince you know, my bosses that, yeah, I would be the right guy to take on those responsibilities as opposed to having separate departments. So moving on, further career evolution. <clears throat> We now move into uh, you know what I like to call integrated marketing. So fully integrated marketing, um, you know, kind of brings all those aspects together of what we've that we've talked about, and you know, it's something I aspired to. I wanted to take on more responsibility, um, and I ended up managing global integrated marketing departments in three different companies. So some of the disciplines within the department, you know, are listed here. So in a fully integrated marketing department, you'll have PR and industrial relations, which may or may not include government lobbying. There's what's called acquisition marketing, which is getting new customers. You have retention marketing, which is keeping your existing customers and then selling them more stuff. Uh, digital and social media falls in there, website management and marketing. There's advertising and branding. Um, internal communications is another aspect of that. You got to be able to communicate what you're doing, not only to your customers and potential customers, but also to your employees to keep them on the same page and then making sure everybody understands where we're headed as a company. Um, there's event planning and trade shows. I mean, this is uh, something that maybe some people don't realize, but typically corporations have event planning and trade show departments. These are people that put on customer events put on trade shows, design trade show booths, or work with companies that do that, manage the trade show and you know, getting the graphics and handouts and look and feel and booth space, scheduling people. And you know, it's a whole different aspect that you know, also somebody with a communications degree would be appropriate for. So if you look at any of the things on this list, these are all in my belief, things that you can do with a communications degree it all depends where you want to specialize. And again, these are not unique to what I was doing at DirecTV or the other entertainment media companies. You know, every com company in the country has similar needs for these kind of things. You know, importantly too, when I did that for uh, technical, if you just go back one, there's one more point I wanted to make. <clears throat> I jumped from, uh, you know, and I'll talk about some of the transition, but 
uh, when I went to Technicolor and I was head of global marketing with an integrated marketing department, that opportunity came through former business partners of people I work with at DirecTV tracked me down and they said, hey, we just bought this company called Technicolor and we need somebody with your skill sets. So, you know, maintaining good relationships throughout your career is critically important to help you transition and to pivot. All right, now you can go, next slide. Sorry, Matt. So key tactics for pivoting. <clears throat> First of all, you know, in your current job, you need to achieve some level of, of success. You need to, you know, make sure you're well thought of and you want to have good relationships so that when it comes time for you to pivot, you'll have your boss will be able to give you a good recommendation. Um, I know when I made my first pivot out of corporate video, my boss said, you know, I know you want to do more. Um, really don't have much here for you, but I'll certainly help you if you want to make a transition into something else. Um, so that's first of all, is have success. Um, next, you need to believe in yourself and your skill set. Um, very important, as I said, break down your job, what you do, believe your skills, that you're effective in it. And then if you, you know, can have some success and point to some specific, specific things that you've done in your career or in that job to show your next employer that here are the things I achieved. Um, you also have the vision for your next role. Um, I always, you know, and it either came through interacting with people in other companies or in other departments. I said, well, you know, I could do that. I could take on those roles. So I always developed a vision for what I really wanted to be in my next step and how I wanted to transition into a next role, the next bigger role. And oftentimes it meant switching companies. So, you know, keep in mind that that's a, a realistic aspect of pivoting and moving on. Um, next is you need to be risk averse. Don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. You know, many people I think get, you know, stuck and they get worried. Wow, am I really, uh, am I risking too much? Am I going to put my career in jeopardy? And certainly early in your career, you got plenty of time to recover. Uh, you know, I had one experience when, you know, I was at the commercial satellite communications company that, you know, DirecTV sprung from. And my boss there said, wow, you're making a big mistake by joining DirecTV. It's unproven. Companies have tried it and failed. You know, don't expect to have your job back when you, when this thing fails. You know, but I was bound to determine. I thought it was a great opportunity. It was exciting. I was stepping out of my comfort zone into a grand unknown. And, you know, lo and behold, it was, you know, hugely successful in the most successful pay TV startup. So um, it's important though, don't, you need to be risk averse. You know, you don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. Um, as I talked a lot about, you need to find similarities between what you do now and the requirements of your next job. As I mentioned, I made a transition from direct TV to a green energy company. Um, a lot of people go, well, what does the utility company have to do with pay TV? Well, the way I explained it to the CEO, and again, they reached out to me and you know, I said, look, at direct TV, we're creating a premium brand. We were trying to convince people to switch from their current cable company, come to direct TV, pay more money for the service, and you have to go out and buy a little satellite dish and have it installed in your roof. You know, huge opportunity, huge change. Um, for this green energy company, I explained to him, I said, look, you're trying to do the same thing. You wanna create a premium brand. You're gonna to try to brand a commodity. Um, you're gonna to try to get people to switch from their current utility provider, you know, like PG&E or Southern California Edison, and go to you and pay more money for the, the uh, so you can have wind generated electricity. So I was able to show him how the marketing challenge was very similar from what we did at Direct TV to Green Mountain Energy and convinced him that, you know, I was the right guy. Because at first, you know, he didn't think so, but it was able to convince him. So find the similarities between what you, you do now and the requirements of the next job. Um, obviously, internships are a great way to start, paid or unpaid. I had my three-month unpaid summer internship. Fortunately, I was able to live at home. Uh, I worked four days a week on the TV show, and then 
two days a week uh, cleaning sailboats in Marina del Rey. And then our production day was on Sunday. So I did that. So put in the dues, paid my dues, you know, worked my butt up and was hired onto the show. But internships are a great way to not only get experience, but also find out, is this the industry that you want to move into? Um, as you're starting your career, I'm a strong believer in informational interviews. Um, this is going back to your networking skills. You know, you have access to the alumni council. You have access to people on LinkedIn from UCSB. Um, asking people for informational interviews is a great way to start. And you're not asking for a job. You're just, you know, asking them how they get started, what's their background, talk about what their company does. Um, and importantly, ask for referrals of other people that might be worth talking to. You'd be surprised how willing people are to offer, you know, to share their time and share their stories and just as an informational basis. Next uh, is networking. And I can't emphasize the importance of this. It's important. It's constant and continual throughout your career, not just when you need help finding a job. You know, I talked about, you know, my first pivot from corporate video to PR came through a networking connection. Uh, my jump into a, a global communications job with Technicolor came through networking connections. Um, after many years in LA and the corporate world, my wife and I grew tired of living in LA and decided to sell the house and just, you know, take a flyer and we moved to Denver. And again, I use these techniques, informational interviews and networking to re get reestablished there, reaching out to people I knew in the industry. Um, they were more than willing to help, just find out, you know, what companies are in Denver, what companies might be uh, in need of marketing services. Do you know any people that, you know, I might talk to? And, you know, I moved there in November and by the middle of January, I had secured a marketing role with a broadband company, an internet company. So these things work throughout your career. So never overlook the importance of this. And, you know, the beauty of what's going on now with the Alumni Communications Council and with things like LinkedIn, which, you know, I've used throughout my career, is you can connect with people now and start building out your network. So don't, don't hesitate to do that because it's something that you will use throughout your career. So um, I always get asked a question, so like, when is the right time to pivot? <clears throat> well, obviously you've got to, um, you know, have some success in your, your current position, but, you know, according to LinkedIn here are the, you know, four key motivating factors on when people pivot. One is salary. Um, the next one is trying to get improved work-life balance. I think we're seeing a lot of that right now. You know, with the pandemic, you've got people that are quitting their jobs and taking remote jobs or moving around the country because they want a better work-life balance. Um, you know, you, another motivating factor is you want to learn and grow. And then also you want to have greater impact in your job. So when is the best time to pivot? I'll step through a couple of, you know, supporting points here. If you would, Matt. So first off, um, <clears throat> growth in your current position is limited. Um, you'll know when there's a, you know, growth is limited. You know, again, you need to be there long enough to understand that and find out there's no further opportunity, but um, that's one time to start to pivot. Next, uh, you may have a strong sense that you're ready to do more in your career. You're either bored, frustrated, you're not being challenged. Next, and probably the biggest motivator is you want to make more money um, and take on new responsibility. Um, and then finally, a way that has helped me throughout that are recruiters that will reach out to you. And this is where you need to apply some of the things we've just talked about that recruiter will say, hey, I've got this position. And then you'll need to explain how your current experience would apply or be appropriate in that new position. So again, I talked about, you know, how I went from direct TV to Green Mountain Energy to a wind generated electricity company, you know, and I had to explain how the marketing challenges were similar. But recruiters will contact you throughout your career, um, and that's a you know a great opportunity that really will help you achieve kind of all of those things. 
particularly they they not only offer more responsibility but particularly particularly you'll have an opportunity to increase your salary kind of in summary um you know i wanted to just you know go through this slide and just reiterate the versatility of a communications degree you know a comm degree provides you with the skills that can be applied in many different ways you know we talked about a lot of the skill sets within uh, communications degrees, it could be PR, you could go into advertising, you can go into marketing and integrated marketing and all the different things that I listed on that slide. Um, there were several people who took their comm degree and they went to law school. I've got another uh, former roommate actually went into the legal industry, but he became a jury consultant. So he applied it in a very different way. You know, we're in a highly charged political environment these days. So politics has huge need for communications people, uh, not only as chief spokespeople, but PR people work with the media, work with social media. Uh, there's also a need in nonprofits. So importantly, communication skills are needed in virtually every industry. Um, don't overlook that. You really need to, you know, find something that you're passionate about or find an industry that you're intrigued about and you know there are there will be communications jobs within that with a comm degree as i hopefully have explained it really enables you to pivot throughout your career there are so many ways to apply a communications degree you know i not only started my own marketing and pr firm and worked with a lot of different industries but i'm also volunteering and running a, a nonprofit here in oregon um, and again that's a lot of you know communication skills it's networking, it's writing, it's managing people, it's managing projects and budgets. It's all these things that, you know, for me, have fallen under communications. So with your degree, and I'm and look, hopefully you'll all be graduating soon, you know, I really believe it provides you with a rich and rewarding career path that can keep you intrigued, motivated, challenged, and inspired throughout your career, you know, and even post-career. So for me, it's been... Uh, a really interesting journey and lots of twists and turns, lots of excitement. Um, you know, my wife always jokes, she goes, how'd you survive, you know, in the corporate world? You know, there's positive things, but also then there's, you know, the corporate travel I did. I think I booked over 3 million airline miles traveling to all these different locations as part of my, you know, corporate marketing job. So paid a bit of a price with that, but you know, exposed me to a lot of amazing experiences, unique people that I've met around the world, and I built a really strong network. So, you know, that's, uh, I think, the opportunity ahead of you. So with that, I'll stop my yakking and open it up to any questions people may have. Thanks, Tom. And, and definitely, please feel free to come off mute if you'd like to ask your question to Tom directly. You can uh, continue to ask questions in the chat if you've done so already. Um, I actually have a question, uh, Tom, um, just to kick things off. Uh, given your vast experience in a variety of different industries and a variety of different roles um, over the course of your career, have you noticed or seen a shift in hiring practices amongst all those industries um, based on what you used to see and what you see now? You know, not, I just think there's a strong need for it. I mean, in, um, you know, most before Sunrock Media and Marketing, I worked for a company called Fathom Events and, you know, the hiring practices really didn't change. I mean, we needed people kind of in all those areas. Um, certainly there's more need for people with understanding of digital media and technology and social media. You know, it's uh, probably, greater importance on those, some of those tactics being used today. Digital marketing kind of is a, a growth, but, you know, I think there's still, you know, strong demand, you know, and, and keep in mind, I, you know, I focused on the corporate world, but also there are all these agencies you can go work for. PR agencies, ad agencies, marketing agencies, crisis communication agencies, you know, there are, many different ways to do it because all these agencies are typically then hired by the corporation. So there's kind of different way angles to come at. Um, but no, I haven't really seen, you know, change in hiring practices other than, you know, people still needing people, but needing broad-based skills. Great. Thank you. I have a, this is Ron. 
Um, you mentioned that you moved in one job from a million dollar budget to another job with a hundred million dollar budget. Now this is an extremely detailed question. I mean, given the scope of what you've done, but what did you have to do differently? Cause you cannot manage a hundred million dollar budget at the same level of detail that you can a million dollars. So what new skills did you have to develop or what new processes did you apply? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a pretty big jump, you know, from a million dollar out of budget to a hundred million dollars. And that, you know, evolved over a couple of years. Um, you know, it was really different audiences. One, you know, the smaller budget originally was, uh, it was a corporate marketing budget. It was a trade advertising budget where direct TV was a consumer targeted budget. Um, so to really make that effective, besides just managing the, <clears throat> the spend, you know, was to make sure we were laser targeted. We weren't just throwing money around. So at Direct TV, we spent the first $10 million of that budget on focus groups and market research to precisely define the target audience so that when we did spend that $100 million, um, it was very focused on the right audience with the right messaging. And we knew what the right motivating messages we had to have in the advertising uh, to be effective. Um, it also involved, I mean, you know, with a hundred million dollar budget, we, you know, I hired a couple people to work for me to help with that, but then we hired a big, you know, global ad agency that was expert in not only creating the advertising, but then media buying and media targeting, you know, cause that was a skill set that was, you know, not my expertise. We hired experts in the agency that were, we're expert in targeting and taking our dollars and spending them efficiently and effectively. Hey, thanks. But yeah, I, mean, I just remember the day that my boss, you know, sat down with me on the spreadsheet and was showing how they made the growth of the budget. And I went from my <laughs> eyes kind of popped out of my head when he goes, yeah. And so in the next couple of years, it'll be a hundred million dollars a year in advertising. So that was that's one of those things where I went, holy crap! <laughs> am I ready to do that? Yeah. Right. Yes, of course I am. Sure, of course. <laughs> On the outside, you say that, right? Inside, I was panicked. Outside, I was going, oh, sure, I got that covered. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, but again, you believe in your skills, you believe in your past experience, and you know you're willing to jump into it and right. go for it. Hey, Tom, I was curious about some of the demands you're seeing for um, for students coming out of college now. Like what what are the kind of jobs you're seeing that would be interesting for these folks to consider? Like what are the most in demand kind of entry level jobs? Are you seeing any trends or any other guidance you think that we might be able to to offer? <laughs> yeah, no, I think, you know, you've obviously you need to have realistic expectations coming out of school, but you know, you're probably going to come in a marketing coordinator position, a PR coordinator, you know, at a very junior level position, and you've got to be willing to, to take that. So uh, I just, you know, I was fortunate because I had coming out of graduate school, I had really unique experience and very specialized and was able to join a company that was just starting their corporate video department. So that was a unique situation, but um, generally, you know, you're going to start entry level coordinator, PR, marketing, digital media. Boy, there's such a need for digital media within corporations to help them with their Instagram, Facebook, Twitter feeds, online marketing. Um, so, if you have, you know, expertise in that, starting out as a you know digital marketing coordinator is, I think, uh, a great way to start. And again, the other thing I found there's, you know, startups are a great way to get in because you can grow quickly because um, they're always adding new capabilities. And I think there are lots of opportunities if you're in a, a total growth mode. So don't be afraid to, to look at startups. And, and again, you know, find people that, you know, started at UCSB and they might, might be willing to, to help you out. 